When working with meshes, often you have to do procedures that remove the texture from the original object. So in this case, I have this scanned object in Blender. Uh, there were holes in it, and I wanted to remesh it in different software, in MeshLab in this case. So I exported the object, imported it, uh, did the remeshing in MeshLab, imported it back into Blender, but it has no texture anymore. To get the texture back, uh, it requires a procedure called texture baking. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to texture bake this kind of 3D models. So the first thing that you should do is change the user interface a little bit to make the process easier. So we go to the corner here, uh, the cursor of the mouse changes into a small plus and we start dragging to the right. That creates another panel on the left. Uh, we change this panel, now both panels are 3D views. Uh, we change it to the shader editor. So the shader editor is uh, where the material is created. And we need one other user panel and we will create this uh, at the bottom here. So again, we go to the corner, a plus cursor uh, appears and you can drag upwards and now you can change this panel to uh, either the image editor or UV editor uh, we will switch between those uh, two editors uh, this is where we can see the big texture um, so we have this object over here uh, and the object we want to bake to uh, the first important thing to do here is to make sure that it is properly UV unwrapped. So as you can see with this object, if I select it and then enter into edit mode, you will see that it has a 2D representation in UV space and that is the mapping of the texture to the 3D model. So uh, in this case, this is the texture and you can go out of it and you will see that these areas correspond to certain areas of the object. So I can also link select this area and then you see that this corresponds to this region on the object. Okay, so because of the processing we did in MeshLab, this uh, data has been lost, so we have to basically redo it. But it, uh, the mesh has changed, so we cannot literally copy um, what we had in the, in the old object, so we have to uh, basically redo it. Um, so go into edit mode, select everything, and then you hit U. And then it's a simple matter of choosing smart UV project and it will automatically create optimal, uh, yeah, an optimal unwrapping that is usable for our purposes. Uh, you can just leave the default settings. Uh, we may change a little bit of the island margin. I will show you in a little bit what that does. But for now I select OK. And it may take a while, depending on how fast your computer is and how uh, large the mesh is. So you see it uh, did an unwrapping of the 3D object in this 2D area. Um, but what we would like to see is that there's a little bit of space between those different uh, so-called UV islands. So these are the separate parts of the mesh that are unwrapped in 2D space in uh, these are called islands um, but they are a little bit too close to each other and that may cause issues later when uh, a texture is displayed on the mesh so there may be uh, pixels from a island nearby being displayed on uh, the wrong side for instance those kind of things can happen so it's generally good to make this a small number. I mean, if we make it too large, so you can see what will happen. 
will recalculate the UV in wrapping with a bigger margin so now there is a little bit more space between the different UV islands so and that is uh, that's what we need um, if we make it too big 0.1 you get something like this and uh, well the downside clearly is uh, there's only very very small parts reserved for very large part of the mesh and that means that only a few pixels can be allocated to that part on the texture so we can never get a good resolution so um, keep this at 0 0.001 and it will generally be fine okay so that is the first step the UV unwrapping done you can still s see the texture of the uh, of the other object the original object in the background that is just a background display I can make this any uh, image that I have in my blender file so don't be confused by that it's just displaying on the background it doesn't mean it is actually applied to the object so the next step is create a material for the object that needs to be baked to and make sure that it has a texture in that material that we can use to bake the color information to because at the moment if I look at this object it doesn't have any material so I can uh, click here to create a material and I can change its name to Lekitos Bake for instance and then I can go here to the material editor and that's why we created this panel over here and we can enlarge it a little bit for our convenience and now I use shift a to add a texture called an image texture so now we create a empty image texture node there's no texture connected to it it's just a node in the uh, material or shader editor so we create a new texture here by clicking new and we give it a name so we could call it Lekitos um, body uh, holes filled or better match it with the uh, object uh, name so body mesh lab export and then we can use C for a color uh, and then we make this a uh, 4k texture so I hit here I can enter simply 4096 or 1024 times 4 which gives you the same number and then you hit OK and now this texture is also available over here so uh, if we look here like it just minute it's still black it's also not used yet by the object because the object is still uh, getting its base color from this field so yeah I can change the color like this uh, there's a, a quick way to connect it it's simply get the color output from the texture to the color input uh, to the principled shader and then you see it's black so we have it UV unwrapped uh, we have created a texture for it to bake to the texture is still empty or with only black pixels and now there's the, uh, the next step and that is to bake it from here uh, the original object to the new object so how do we do this so we select this object first then with shift select the object to which is baked
the next step is to first select the object with the original texture that we want to use and then control select the object to which we want to bake this will become the active object so we're gonna uh, bake from the selected object it can be multiple objects even to the active object and the active object is always the object you selected last then it's very important in the shader editor to select the texture to which we want to bake so now because it's selected blender knows okay you want to bake to that texture to that image file and then we have to find the bake uh, sub panel in the render panel so make sure that all your render settings are optimized first so we use GPU compute um, for baking we don't need a lot of samples so you can turn the samples down to one uh, also we don't need that many uh, light paths we can just set it all to three um, the default is 12 here and 8 here you can just turn it down to three it will speed up the baking then you scroll down all the way to bake over here and you may have to uh, uh, enlarge it like this and then from this panel choose diffuse so we want to um, bake the diffuse color from the object we this is uh, turned on by default direct and indirect we don't want direct and indirect influences of light that you might ha may have po uh, placed in your scene we just want the color literally the color from the base object and then this is important selected to active so that was why we first selected the body original object and then um, the object to which we wanted to bake and by default this is uh, set at one and I will show you what happens if we leave it at one otherwise uh, the margin is uh, important because it's kind of extends um, the color a couple of pixels beyond what is literally baked so um, when we talked about these UV islands uh, over here so it will bake a little bit beyond that so it doesn't have very harsh edges with uh, uh, transition to black because that may be visible in the final model so we want to keep a decent uh, pixel margin here okay I will select and then control this one make sure this is one okay now everything is set to uh, for baking and I can hit the bake button over here this may take a while depending on how fast your computer is it also depends on how large the texture that uh, is that you want to bake so we chose a 4k so 4096 by 4096 pixels it's relatively large if you bake to a 1k 1024 by 1024 pixel texture it uh, will go much quicker so it has baked already it doesn't appear yet so there's so ah look at this okay so what you can see now what happened is that it didn't properly bake everything and the reason that it uh, did it like that is because the new object that we generate in MeshLab is not exactly in the same place as the original object so the mesh there's some slight deviation and that causes some issues with the baking uh, procedure so I think yeah it may not know exactly what the front and the back side of the faces are so how do we resolve this well that I was talking about this earlier there's this setting here extrusion so it is useful to kind of extrude the 
object a little bit so that is the uh, active object to inflate it they call it here um, to make sure that it's kind of entirely encapsulated uh, encapsulates the original object so you get the, uh, the bake uh, right don't make this too large because otherwise you get an inaccurate color mapping so again in my experience 0 0.01 for this size of obje object so basically is a millimeter inflated um, you get uh, good results so this is still the same hit bake try again it's finished and as you can see it did bake pretty nicely so we can turn off the original object and you can see that it now baked all the all the color information from the original to the uh, to the cleaned up object So as you can see, the areas that were, were originally holes and that we filled in uh, MeshLab uh, received also kind of random colors. Uh, that's because, of course, there was no exact match with the original object. You can keep it like this because it makes clear that um, a modification to the original scan was made here. Um, if you think this is too ugly, you can always texture paint it uh to uh, to a single color uh, but texture painting will be the subject of another uh, video